Coach Kavanaugh, you know, I got to tell you, as far as personalities or, or, or members of our community, he rates right at the top for me. Like, John Kavanaugh has, has incredible contributions, but he also remains very humble. Like, if there's anybody that has the answers to questions that we really want, it's him. And most guys would dangle that in front of you with, like, more of an arrogance. More of, like, a, a back and forth, I've got what you want. He just comes out and he's a regular guy. Every single time he does an interview, he's just a regular guy. He goes on Ariel's show yesterday. And there was two topics. I want to bring you both of them, though. Okay, just kind of a recap on what Coach Kavanaugh and Errol talked about, because one of them was Johnny Walker. Now, Johnny Walker is a very interesting case study in MMA. I mean, this guy came in so red hot. They were talking about, and Johnny was one win away from being in there with John Jones, but people were talking about, this is the guy that's going to beat John. And, you know, Johnny stands like six foot five. He's got these long reach that could almost match John Jones. I mean, they were starting to break some of these things down. He was real clever and real dynamic with some of the elbows and some of the strikes. And he was training in Thailand. I mean, this is off the top of my head. This was a number of years ago. But the story was starting to unfold about this, this mysterious gem getting ready to be the savior of the light heavyweight division. So, and he looked good. He just plays a dangerous game. He plays a very dangerous game. Now, pressure is going to get to anybody and styles and the more videos that get out there. Right? I mean, he's a human being on top of it, but he does play a risky game. And there has been times in his career where he has been caught on the chin, right? I'm talking about, I'm talking about getting hit, the fight being stopped. And I only bring that to you because Johnny is talking about going up to heavyweight. And what do you think? I mean, how does that look? How does that look? I, I had two thoughts off the top of my head. If you have a guy whose problem at light heavyweight is getting caught and falling over, you're going to have a little bit of a hard sell that you're going to send him into a place where they hit even harder. Now, it can be worked on, but if you start discussing a division that you're not in yet during your media time, how does that help you with the division that you are competing in? These were just my thoughts. Real quick off the top of my head. But I do think that it, it, it's interesting because there's a lot of good stuff for Johnny to do. Johnny's a meaningful guy. I mean, Johnny by proxy won a world championship three nights ago. How do you like that? Jamal Hill beats Glover, but Jamal Hill lost to Paul Craig and Johnny knocked out Paul. So by proxy, I mean, you see what I'm saying? Like, he's really good. Can we, can we all agree on that? But if he's got some weight issues or, you know, what, what story are they attempting to tell? When you start setting things like that down, you're setting it down for a reason. You're not trying to get yourself fights. You're, you're beginning to tell a story. You want the audience to hear it. You want your coaches to hear it. You want the UFC to hear it. You're beginning to tell a story. And the story is I'm having a hard time making 205 pounds and I'm giving a look to heavyweight. Okay, fair enough. I think that we've heard the story, and I know that I would be very open to the idea, but if we're not going to do that next, it puts us in a little bit of a jam for what are we going to do next, particularly if we do it at 205. Now, moving on with Coach Kavanaugh. He spoke about Conor McGregor, right? Conor's getting ready to heist this, this big comeback, and then, and then some people think that's fun to go, well, is he really going to come back, or is he just playing with us? So then you got to have this whole debate on that. Coach Kavanaugh came out, he said, I'd bet everything on it, I'd bet my house on it. You will see Conor McGregor in 2023. Now, when Connor came back, when Connor came back the first time, this is years ago, but Coach Kavanaugh made a statement, and I remember it. I remember it because I really liked it. And what he said was, before I will train Connor McGregor for a comeback fighter for an MMA fight, I'm going to sit with Connor McGregor. And I'm going to ask him one question. Why are you doing this? And based on what his answer is, we'll decide if I'm going to train him and support this idea. I really like that because I really got his point. This isn't something, this isn't a game that you can go play. You can play anything that you want, I think. I think that's true. I know a place you can go ride motorcycles right here in Oregon. I know a place you can go rent and you can play paintball. I belong to a, a tennis place. There's, there's basketball right down at our local park. You don't even need to, to sign up. Just bring your own ball. This is one thing you don't play. 
You don't play fighting. You don't do that for recreation. You don't do that to get in shape. You don't do that for fun. It's something else. It's something different. People aren't trying to score points on you. They're trying to damage you, right? It's something different. So the reason why you're here, I think it's very important. I thought it was very responsible by Coach Kavanaugh. He said, you know what I'm going to do this time? I visit, talk with Connor, and he said, when we're talking, I'm going to throw some names at him, but I'm going to be reading his body language. If there's a specific name where he lights up or he perks up more, that's probably the direction that we're going to go. And he talked about who the opponents could be. Dustin Poirier was on the list, but kind of an outside shot. Chandler was on the list. Seemed like maybe even leading the charge. Nate Diaz was on the list. Now, these are different weight classes, though, right? One's at 55, one's at 70, or is Chandler willing to go up? We can, we can answer all of these questions at some point. But I do believe, from what my ears were picking up on, reading body language, trying to understand the tone, I do believe that our discussions of Connor in a world championship, we can stop for now, right? Because that's been out there, guys. And don't think that wouldn't come back. Don't think for a millisecond that if Islam or Volkanovsky emerges and Connor says, boom, I'm next, that we're not going to start having that conversation again. Don't think for a second, particularly if Leon wins, particularly if Leon wins, that we're not going to start having that conversation if they wanted to. I don't know that they want to. I think that Carter wants to go out and have a match. Right? This, this could be a really hard thing to put yourself in this kind of a position. When you are fighting for nothing but world championships or for contenderships to get to world championships, and now you're doing a match for the love of the sport. You're doing a match for the back and forth and the buildup. I mean, make no mistake, Conor McGregor did not hate Jose Aldo. That might be how you remember the story, but that, that wasn't true. Conor McGregor needed to assign an emotion that would evoke a reaction from himself of deep hunger and drive and desire. And he needed to assign that to ever had the world championship because that was what he was after. I could say the same thing for Chad Mendes. I could say the same thing for Eddie Alvarez. So Connor is in a, a little bit of a unique situation. I mean, what's he going to do? Is he going to go out and choose a, between those names I just dropped? Is he going to choose the guy that he likes the most as a way, hey, pet, Red Panty Night's real. Is that what he's going to do? Going to do a favor for a buddy? It would surprise me, but maybe. Is he going to wait and see which one of those guys insults him the most so that he can get angry? If they're not fighting for a belt and he doesn't need the money, what are they fighting for? Right? I mean, I just think that they're interesting questions. I don't know what's going to make him tick. I think it's a fine line. I don't think it's whoever insults him the most and makes him the most upset gets you guys saying the most stuff on social media. I don't think that is. I think that guy is going to piss him off and he's not going to give him the opportunity because Red Panty Night is real. I don't think he's going to do it for the guy that he doesn't like. Tough spot. What's he fighting for? What weight class are we fighting at? One thing that we do have right from his coach is in 2023, at some point, he will be fighting.